Hi everyone, my name is Jackie and I'm a singer. I love to sing songs and at this time of the year, Christmas, this is one of my favorite times to sing songs all about Christmas. I'm really excited because I get to read a story to you today that is all about one of my favorite songs, Silent Night. You may know the song. You may have sung it in church or in school, or maybe somebody you know has sung that song to you. Well, let's read this book and find all about how Silent Night came to be. Are you ready? Okay, sit back, find a comfy chair, and let's go. Silent Night, Holy Night, A Song for the World. And this book is written by Werner Tuss Wagner with pictures by Robert Ingpen. Silent Night, Holy Night, the hymn whose serenity restores us, men, women, and children, to the peace which is our true home. Millions of people know the melody. Some know the verses, but very few are aware of more than a grace and blessed consolation of beyond the carol. Very few know anything of its mysterious birth, the seed of its magic, and the source of its power. At Christmas time, early in the 19th century, two friends, one a curate, Joseph Moore, the other a teacher and organist, Franz Xavier Gruber, were living in the Austrian village of Oberndorf on the river Zalzak. War had been raging in the area. The bridge collapsed, cannonballs wrecked the houses, and stifling smoke filled the streets. Many had died when foreign soldiers invaded and looted the village. In the winter, it seemed as if the cold would never end. When the river froze, there was hardly any work, as most of the men were barges, transporting salt by barge from the mountains to the great cities. Salt was so precious in those days that it was known as white gold. In the grip of a long winter, the spark of hope almost died among the people. Even when the ice melted, the Zalzak set free came leaping down from its mountain gorges, tossing aside the houses on its banks. Time and again, a barge and his family, home and living gone, would face ruin. These people were no strangers to hunger and want, grief and suffering. The young priest, Josef Moore, and the organist, Franz Xavier Gruber, were equally familiar with poverty. Both came from poor families. Moore, from the city of Salzburg, had never known his father, who was said to have been a musketeer. His mother earned the family's meager living by knitting garments. His godfather had actually been the town's executioner. Thanks to an observant priest, 
Yosef was helped to develop his gifts and attended school and university, training to become a curate, moving from one parish to another across the country. Oberndorf was his second appointment. A cheerful soul, Josef smoked a long pipe, sat in the inn with the bargees, drank with them, and accompanied their songs on the guitar. Franz Xavier Gruber had been lucky too. Left to his parents, he would have had to stay at home and work at the weaver's loom beside his brothers and sisters. But he, too, worked hard at school and especially enjoyed his music lessons. His father reluctantly agreed to let Franz become a teacher. But loving music as he did, he spent every spare moment at the organ, playing and composing tunes of his own. Music comforted him through many family tragedies. Of his 12 children, only four survived, even though he would end up outliving his friend Yosef by 15 years. The two men decided to give the sorely tried villagers of Oberndorf a Christmas present, a song to rouse them from the misery of despair. Moore offered his friend a poem he had written, and within a short time, Gruber had set it to music. The church organ was in a sorry state, so they decided to perform the new song at the end of the midnight mass with a guitar accompaniment. Rumors of a special event had spread through the village ahead of the mass and excitement rose when the two men walked in and began to sing. Moore played the guitar and the congregation in the candlelit church began to join in the refrain as if they had always known this newly created hymn. Born up by the miracle that had come on them on that silent, holy night, the people walked home through the snow with lighter hearts, the first to hear the carol whose heavenly message now encompasses the world. Only light, the radiant light of a visionary inspiration could travel so swiftly from a little Austrian village to the most distant corners of the world. Missionaries helped to carry its joyful news to places and times undreamed of by Josef and Franz Xavier. Even in the world's darkest hour, one Christmas season during World War I, in the most dreadful days of all, between a thousand and a thousand deaths, men walked toward each other, enemies, wondering, sharing the air of an old Austrian song, and coming closer, they saw not enemies, but themselves in that redeeming dawn. Now, when people hear the carol, they feel just as the worshipers felt at that midnight mass in Oberndorf. No one could claim it for the glitzy world of the supermarkets on the city's commercial streets. It does not promise children loads of presents for Christmas. Instead, it stirs the hearts of everyone as they sense the beauty of modesty 
and humility, and remember when they, too, were little children. Whenever the song is heard, it recreates the atmosphere of that far-off Christmas night when Joseph and Franz Xavier began to sing the simple melody in Oberndorf Church, when the listeners, as they joined in the refrains, forgot all the want and misfortune they had known and turned their thoughts to the holiest night of all. Did you like that story? Isn't that a wonderful story about the song Silent Night? Well, do you remember when I told you at the start of this how much I love to sing? Well, I think it's time that you and me sing this song together. So will you join me? Let's sing Silent Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy so tender and mild. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. That was beautiful. I could hear you singing with me. So the next time you sing Silent Night, I hope you will think about this book. Thank you for being with me. I've had so much fun spending this time with you. Now you go and have a wonderful and Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. <laughs>